So, your child wants to be a rock star. As we mentioned, my name is Matthew Renzi. I'm a graduate of class of 1996, and uh, tomorrow is actually my 25-year class reunion. So they invited me here to speak to the students tomorrow, but we thought it'd also be a little bit fun to have me give you a presentation as well. This is gonna be pretty similar to what I'm gonna be teaching the students tomorrow, so we thought you might find that interesting to see what we're gonna be teaching the students. But I've changed little bits of it for a more adult audience. But ultimately, I think we're gonna have some fun with it. So my purpose with this presentation is threefold. First, I'm here to tell you a story, a Kemper alumni success story. However, this is gonna be a fairly non-traditional success story. We're gonna have some fun with it. We're gonna play this story like it's an interactive video game or choose your own adventure story. And there's gonna be a lot of bumps in the road on this journey to success. Second, as the title of my talk suggests, I'm here to reassure all of the parents and some of the grandparents in the room. Uh, someday, you're gonna be having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with your teenage son or daughter or grandson or granddaughter. And you're gonna ask them, you know, so what do you wanna be when you grow up someday? And they're gonna look at you and they're gonna say, you know, I wanna be a TikTok influencer like Charlie DiMaglio. And you're gonna be like, you wanna be a what? For who? So I'm here to essentially reassure you that there might be some hope for these teens uh, as they go forward. And third, as we just saw, I definitely need to practice my jokes for tomorrow. Like adults are easy. You guys will laugh at anything just to avoid the awkward silence after a bad joke. But teens are ruthless. I mean, they will be, they're just cruel. They essentially do treat you with a callous and different and abject silence the entire time. Trust me, I know I was one of those teens at one point in time. All right, so my first question, how many of you have played a video game like The Sims? I'm guessing just a few hands, okay. Uh, has anyone played a video game at all? Okay, a few more hands. All right, so now let's look. How many of you have at least read a Choose Your Own Adventure book? Okay, I was actually hoping to see a few more hands in that. All right, so a Choose Your Own Adventure book is essentially a story where you choose actions that help the character move along different paths in the story, ultimately le leading to different endings for the story. Now, these were pretty popular when I was a kid because we didn't have really cool video games like The Sims and uh, World of Warcraft and stuff like that. Well, today, we're going to be playing an interactive game of life as a group. Uh, you're going to get to make decisions that are going to affect the life of our avatar, just like in a video game like The Sims. With each decision, we're going to be sending our avatar down one of two different paths, uh, just like we would do in a Choose Your Own Adventure book. Some choices are going to immediately end the game, and other choices are going to lead us further down the path of success. And now, I should note that not all of the choices you're going to make are neither necessarily good nor bad. Essentially, we only have time to traverse one main story thread, so we're going to have to keep things nice and short. All right, so that's enough talking. Let's get into our game. So here we see we've got the start screen for the video game. Uh, we're going to be playing The Game of Life, a virtual life simulation. And it looks like we need to press the any key to start. I don't really know. Oh, here it is. Okay. So first, we need to select a character. Now, we've got a bunch of teenage, uh, typical teenage stereotypes with some goofy names here. And uh, let's just, let's pick this guy here on the end. He seems like a handsome young fellow. <laughs> All right, so here we have our avatar. This is who we're gonna be playing our game with. Uh, his name's Matthew, which is an interesting coincidence because that's my name too. Uh, his strengths are music and computers, and his weaknesses are sports and math. And unfortunately, he has no superpowers. So I think he'll be good enough. And next, we need to select our career difficulty level. And now we can just choose easy. That pretty much just requires a high school diploma for these careers. A normal takes a, about a four year degree these days. Hard's like eight plus years of college to become like a doctor or a lawyer. Uh, or we can choose rock star, which is super difficult because you have to become one of the best in the world. Like we're talking natural talent plus 10 years of dedicated practice and then a lot of luck in order to make it. So anything worth doing is worth doing right. So let's choose rock star difficulty level. All right, so our primary objective in the game of life is essentially to achieve the American dream. We want to live a good life, have a steady job, uh, own our own home, maybe get married, have a family, etc. And you can do this in any way that's possible within the eight levels of the video game. However, since we selected rock stars or difficulty level, we're gonna try to achieve this American dream by becoming a professional rock musician. This is gonna be really tough. All right, so hopefully everybody understands the game. Um, we'll get started now just as soon as the game finishes loading. It's inevitable. You're always waiting for a game loading screen these days. Now, these games typically have a bunch of uh, cutscenes and, and a lot of backstory for the characters. However, we don't have a whole lot of time here today, so we're just gonna skip all the backstory like the teenagers do and get right into the action. So here we are on our first day of high school. Uh, that's our avatar here over on the left. Um, as you can see, we're getting ready to hop on the bus for our first day at Kemper. All right, welcome to level one of the video game, high school. 
Now, high school is sort of a practice round where, you know, before we set off on our main adventure in the real world. So here we are, freshman year of high school. As you can see, we're shy, awkward, wearing glasses that are too big for our face, dealing with braces, uh, uncomfortable in our bodies, and apparently we have no sense of fashion whatsoever. I mean, this is a feeling I'm sure many of us can relate to. We were all freshmen at one point in time. Uh, you're a bit nerdy, so you kind of get bullied a little bit at school. That's not fun at all. Uh, the girls aren't really interested in you, but you're definitely interested in them. Uh, you're just average in academics, below average in sports, and well below average in popularity. Oh, and you really struggle at math. In fact, math is your most difficult subject every semester. Now, your sophomore year of high school, you and your friends were watching a lot of MTV. You see, back then, MTV used to play music videos 24-7. You're watching the rock stars do their thing on stage. They're all wealthy, successful, popular, and adored by millions of fans. And this seems like a pretty sweet lifestyle. So, what should you do? Should you start a band and practice music every day after school? Or should you continue watching TV, MTV every day after school and just dream about being a rock star? All right, so let's see a show of hands. Who wants to start a band? Okay, and who would rather just hang around and watch some MTV? It's ads. I knew somebody would. I mean, just, it's so much easier, so. All right, so first, let's see what happens if we just continue watching MTV and dreaming about being a rock star. So every day after school, you come home and watch MTV by yourself. You learn a lot about reality TV shows, teen dramas, and music trivia. However, you remain shy, a bit antisocial, and you don't really develop any marketable skills. Fortunately, you don't achieve your American dream, and you don't become a rock star. Game over. Now, in real life, we don't get do-overs like this. However, because this is a video game and because luckily I created a save point, we can actually just go back to the last decision that we made and try again. All right, so now let's see what happens to those of you who chose to start a band. Now, you've got a pretty decent singing voice and you can play some guitar, so you become the lead singer and the rhythm guitarist in your new band. You practice pretty much every day after school for over a year straight. Then, you and your band play your first live show for your junior prom, in Kemper's very gym, in fact. It's completely exhilarating. For 23 minutes straight, you are at the center of your little high school entire universe. Uh, for the first time in your life, you're commanding the attention of an entire room full of people. Everyone's looking up to you, like literally you're standing on stage. All of your classmates, the cool kids, uh, even the seniors who normally wouldn't give you the time of day. And the seniors know what I mean. Um, yeah, it's, it's like an out-of-body experience. It feels amazing, and now you want to feel that sensation again and again. So you perform shows all throughout your junior and senior year, and then with the help of your bandmates, you earn the respect of your peers, a little bit of popularity in school, and finally the interest of some of the ladies. Congratulations, you just leveled up. You discovered your first superpower, which is playing music. Performing on stage is like this magical ability that uh, sets you apart from everyone else. It helps you become more confident, more assertive, more interesting, all of which helps tremendously with your social life. Music helps you survive the difficulties of high school. But despite your early success with music, unfortunately, you're not a rock star yet. All right, so our practice round called high school is over. Now it's time to accept our call to adventure and travel out into the real world. So when you leave high school, you're essentially interested in pursuing two things, music and technology. Fortunately, the grades aren't great, probably because you spent all of your time practicing rock music rather than studying. So your college options are a bit limited when you get out in the real world. You head off to study at a two-year community college in Ankeny. You study computer programming at school, take a part-time job at Best Buy, and play music during your free time. Unfortunately, you struggle with college. Your grades are just average and you keep switching degrees and you're kind of failing at your adult responsibilities. Fortunately, this adulting stuff is actually a little difficult. You get offered a big promotion at work. Uh, it comes with a big raise and the opportunity to travel the country. But all of this travel for work, it makes doing college really difficult. There's no remote learning back then. So you're forced to have to drop out of college, a decision you are certainly soon going to regret. So unfortunately, the job doesn't turn out to be as amazing as it seemed, and you find yourself stuck in a dead-end job with little chance for promotion and no college degree. Professionally, you're going nowhere fast. Plus, you haven't quite figured out how to break into the music scene in Des Moines either. You see, in high school, you were a big fish in a small pond, but now the pond's a lot bigger and you're feeling like a guppy again. So over Thanksgiving break, uh, you run into an old friend of yours from high school who just finished college. He tells you about his new job programming websites and says that they're looking for other software developers. You know a bit about programming from college and you really need a new job, but you don't have a college degree. So he tells you, just send in your resume anyways and he'll do his best to see that you at least get an interview. 
So what should we do? Should we stay at our current job and hope for another promotion? Or should we take a chance and submit our resume even though we don't have a college degree yet? All right, who wants to wait for a promotion? Oh, nobody? Okay, I thought somebody would. All right, and who wants to uh, uh, submit the resume for, okay, taking a chance, excellent. All right, so let's see what happens first if we wait for the promotion. So you stay at your current job despite the fact it's not going well. Without a college degree, you never get promoted to management. One day, a small online bookstore called Amazon starts selling these electronics online. Within a decade, they dominate retail sales as these brick and mortar stores are disappearing overnight. You struggle financially for years, always holding out for that promotion. Game over. You did not achieve your American dream and you did not become a rock star. All right, so now let's see what happens if you take a chance and send in that resume. So luckily, with the help of your friend, you get an interview. The interview goes well and you start creating software for a living. With a lot of practice and the help of several mentors, you become a really good software developer. Now you can create entire worlds out of thin air just by typing commands into a computer. You start creating software that's used by millions of people around the world. You create systems that manage billions of dollars of assets. You create open source software and give it away for free. You get to work with cutting edge technologies. And you even create a few fun video games like this one, which is asteroids essentially in the third dimension. Congratulations, you've leveled up again. You discover your second superpower, a career in technology. This career in technology completely changes your life. It saves you from a life of struggling to pay the bills and leads you to a life of stable and meaningful work. But despite this great career in technology, unfortunately, you're still not a rock star. You're now in your mid-twenties. Your new rock band is doing well, so you're focusing all of your free time on your music. You play a series of concerts around the state of Iowa, you write some original songs which people really seem to like, you record your first album which is getting some good reviews, and you're meeting celebrities and hanging out with like real rock stars like the guys in the band Slipknot, though I'm guessing most people probably don't know Slipknot. Um, so your fan base, the teens will, they'll definitely know. The, your fan base is growing fast and you're working on trying to get a real record deal in order to begin touring. Then your lead guitarist finishes college and he decides that he wants to focus on his career. Soon after, your drummer decides that he'd rather just play music for fun again. Unfortunately, you're no they're no longer interested in getting a record deal or going on tour, so it's just you and your bass guitarist who are still holding out hope for success. You feel completely lost. You don't want to start over again with a new band and unfortunately you're not a good enough musician to just go solo. You see, what they don't teach you in the School of Rock, which is essentially MTV, is that it's actually really hard to become a professional rock musician. Even with natural talent and over 10,000 hours, literally 10 years worth of dedicated practice, uh, your odds of making it big in the music industry are literally, it's like one in 5,000. You literally have better odds of being struck by lightning than you do being successful in the music industry. Honestly, after all the hard work, it's mostly just dumb luck. In addition, you feel like you've hit a ceiling with your career as a software developer. You want to do bigger things in tech, like artificial intelligence and data science, but you lack the proper education to go further. So what should you do? Should you start a new band or should you break up the band and maybe go back to college? Who wants to start a new band? Seems like the rock star thing to do. Okay, yeah, a couple people. I know I, I did. So um, well, let's see what happens if we, if we go uh, that route first and start a new band. All right, so you find a new guitarist and a new drummer and start a new band. You play more shows, record a second album, and sell a few t-shirts, concert t-shirts. Unfortunately, with one in 5,000 odds, uh, you never do get signed to that major label. And without a college degree, you just barely slide by at work on your tech skills. Uh, you spend the rest of your life trying to make it big in the music industry, but you never actually do. Game over, you lived a good life, but you did not achieve your American dream, and you don't become a rock star. So now let's see what happens if you go back to college. You want to go back to college? Okay, yeah, lots of people, okay, yep. All right. So you break up the band and you return to school full time while continuing to work part time. But this time around, you study really hard at all of your schoolwork, especially math. Uh, you discover that college is a lot easier if you're not distracted by all the excesses of the rock star lifestyle. You finish your two year associate's degree in management information systems, then go on to finish two more degrees in business administration and liberal arts. With your higher GPA in hand and much better math skills, you transfer to a four-year college. 
There, you complete double degrees in computer science and philosophy with a minor in economics. You even go on to get a data science specialization at Johns Hopkins University and begin working on your master's degree in artificial intelligence there as well. And you do all this like while you're working the entire time. Man, not bad for an average student who is pretty bad at math, huh? Armed with your new college education, you return to the tech industry full time. A whole new world of career opportunities opens up for you immediately. You become a software consultant and begin consulting for tech startups to Fortune 500 companies. You start your own data science consulting firm and more than double your income. You, meet professional, uh, you start professional networking and meet lots of other great technologists. And they invite you to start teaching others at these technology conferences around the Midwest. Congratulations, you've leveled up again. You discovered your third superpower, education. And not just your ability to educate yourself and the power that higher education provides you, but also your ability to educate others and to help them improve their situation. Your education completely changes your life again. However, despite all of your fancy degrees, unfortunately, you're still not a rock star. Level four, the belly of the beast. All right, so you're now in your mid-30s. Your career's going great, but your health is kind of in pretty bad shape. You see, kids, when you reach a certain age, you're gonna start to notice some changes in your body. Yeah, it's, it's like puberty, second puberty, but for us older people. <laughs> you weren't taking very good care of your physical health, and now you're paying the price for it. You gained over 100 pounds since high school, and you weigh about 260 plus pounds now. Uh, you're developing a whole slew of metabolic disorders, high blood pressure, prediabetes, fatty liver. If, you, if it's on a commercial, you know, for medication, you name it, I had it. Uh, your whole body hurts, also, uh, hurts all the time from inflammation and excess weight. So your doctor informs you that you need to make significant changes to your lifestyle here immediately. Otherwise, she's putting you on a whole slew of medications uh, with a lot of ugly side effects. And you're going to spend the rest of your life on these medications just to stay alive. So what should you do? Should you keep doing whatever you want, whenever you want? Or should we listen to our doctor and change our diet and exercise? Who wants to do whatever you want, whenever you want? I know that sounds, <laughs> yep. I hear you, I hear you. So let's see what happens if we choose this route first before we go the other way. All right, so you keep living life like there's no tomorrow. You eat whatever you want, drink whatever you want, and lounge around every day after work. You party like a rock star on the weekends and deal with those hangovers on Sunday. You continue putting on weight and your health continues to decline. But unfortunately, after many years of health issues, you die suddenly of a heart attack at a relatively early age. Game over. You did not achieve your American dream and you did not become a rock star. I feel like there's a fat Elvis joke in here somewhere, but I just can't figure it out yet. <laughs> All right, so now let's see what happens if you change your diet and exercise instead. So your conversation with your doctor is a big wake up call for you. You don't want to spend your, the rest of your life uh, overweight, on medication, in pain, and unhealthy. So you radically change your lifestyle over the course of a few years. You improve your diet. You switch to a low-carb, low-sugar, mostly ketogenic diet. You now fill your plate with healthy vegetables, uh, healthy fats, and moderate proteins. And you begin incorporating intermittent fasting in your routine as well. You improve your exercise. You begin working out every day. Uh, a, a commitment, essentially, to working out every day. You start walking, jogging, cycling, swimming, and then lifting weights. Over the next year or so, you drop over 50 pounds and return to a normal healthy weight. And then you start long distance cycling. Soon, you're riding over 100 miles in a single day and then over 500 miles in a single week. Not bad for somebody who is below average in sports, huh? Congratulations, you've leveled up to your fourth superpower, your health. And uh, I know what you're thinking, health, how is health a superpower? But unfortunately, the normal state of affairs in America nowadays is actually a lack of physical health. So being above average in your health puts you ahead of the curve and gives you a competitive advantage in the game of life. But despite being in pretty decent physical shape, fortunately, you're still not a rock star. All right, so you're now in your late 30s. Uh, your physical health is in good shape again, and your career is going great. You have everything you need to live a productive, comfortable, and happy life. However, despite all this, you still feel dissatisfied with what you have. You just want more fame, more money, and more success. Like an addict with a constant craving that just won't go away, you just want more. So you start working 10, 12, 14 hours a day, seven days a week. It's getting to the point where you're doing almost nothing. Uh, every hour you're awake but work, and you're only sleeping like six hours a night and not taking breaks, skipping lunch even. Uh, you're skipping family events, not spending time with your friends, and you haven't taken a real vacation in years. 
You're constantly stressed and your mental health is suffering as a result. Your body and brain are screaming at you to slow down, but you are just not listening. Then, boom, out of nowhere, you wake up one morning and something's not right. Your brain is foggy, there's a wall of static in your vision, constant ringing in your ears, and your whole body feels like pins and needles. These symptoms persist 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they never go away. You weren't taking proper care of your mental health, and now you are paying the price for it. So you spend a year going from doctor to doctor without any luck. Uh, they send you to the Mayo Clinic where you see some of the top specialists in the world. They tell you they don't know what's wrong with you, there's no cure, and there's essentially nothing else they can do for you. Keep in mind, these are the top specialists in the world. They suggest that you should work less, learn how to meditate, maybe do some yoga, just hope for the best. And now, when you're really struggling, this is not the kind of advice you want to hear. You're barely able to function at work, and your daily life is a struggle, too. It's leading to considerable stress, anxiety, and eventually depression. You're currently on a downward spiral to a very dark place. So, what should you do? Should you take your doctor's advice and maybe learn how to meditate? Or should you self-medicate with drugs and alcohol? Who'd like to self-medicate? <laughs> Trust me, at the time, I was thinking it was a really good idea. It seemed like it, but... Um, and I know there's just got to be somebody who wants to see our avatar crash and burn. So we're going to go this direction. We're going to see what happens. All right, so here we go. So your symptoms, when they're really bad, you either take a drink or pop a pill to take the edge off. Uh, this eventually becomes a habit which grows into an addiction which leads to a downward spiral. Your life completely falls apart, you burn all of your bridges, and you end up alone on the streets. A few years later, unfortunately, you're found dead in an alleyway, having died of suspicious circumstances. Game over. You did not achieve your American dream, and you did not become a rock star. Wow, that one got dark fast. I should probably point out that all of these B stories are things that actually happened to somebody I know. Uh, this one was actually a tough one. It was a friend of mine. All right. So now let's see what happens to those of you that chose the path of mindfulness. All right. So you eliminate all of your mindless habits. You cut back on social media. You turn off the television. And you quit surfing the internet. You learn mindfulness practices like meditation and yoga. You begin meditating for 30 minutes every day, first thing in the morning. Mindfulness teaches you how to retrain your mind to be more resilient to stress, to be calm in the face of difficult physical, mental, or emotional pain. It teaches you how to overcome your cravings and your aversions, to be more focused, less judgmental, and more empathetic towards others. You eventually learn that your unusual set of symptoms are caused by a rare neurological condition called visual snow syndrome, and unfortunately, it's permanent. There is currently no known cure. However, with the help of mindfulness, you learn how to manage your symptoms, and you begin teaching others to do the same. Today, you're rarely stressed. You no longer fear public speaking. Well, except for speaking in front of a room full of high school students. Like, this is terrifying, guys. Like, I don't know how teachers do it every day. So, you continue public speaking. Eventually, you're speaking at technology conferences around the U.S., and then eventually across the world. Public speaking gives you the same satisfaction as performing music for a live audience on stage, but even more so because you're not just entertaining people, you're also educating and inspiring them too. This leads you to begin creating online courses which uh, have taught over 400,000 people uh, worldwide. You become an expert on artificial intelligence, data science, and machine learning so that you can teach these topics to others. You dedicate your career to helping others prepare their careers for the coming wave of AI-enabled automation. As a result, you win several industry awards, including the prestigious Microsoft MVP Award, which you win for, it was, they said five in the bio, but it's actually seven years in a row. Congratulations, you've leveled up to your fifth superpower, mindfulness. Mindfulness not only has a profound impact on your life, but also on the lives of the people around you. Mindfulness just makes you a better person all around. But despite all the benefits of mindfulness, unfortunately, you're still not a rock star. All right, you're now in your late 30s. You're, health, or you're healthy, mindful, and successful, uh, but you still feel a little bit lost in the world. You've had a few short-term relationships and a couple of long-term ones. However, in the end, they never seem to work out. You assume you either just, you just haven't found the right girl yet, or maybe, just maybe, you're not the right kind of guy for the right kind of girl yet. See, if you're struggling to find the right guy or girl, and this is more advice for the teenagers, uh, you need to invest in becoming a better person. Great spouses are attracted to great people, people who have their lives in order, people who continuously invest in becoming better people themselves. So you begin investing in becoming a better person so that if or when the right person comes along, then you will be ready for them and they will hopefully be more attracted to you. 
Then one random Thursday afternoon, you're speaking at a conference in Kansas City, and you see a girl sitting at a table by herself. You assume she's a new speaker, probably just doesn't know anybody, so you introduce yourself and the two of you start talking. Uh, you discover that you have a lot in common despite the fact that you have very different backgrounds. Uh, she grew up in New York City, came from a wealthy family, went to the best schools, uh, trained to be an astronaut at NASA, studied at Cambridge, was on Jeopardy, lived on a yacht, knows a bunch of famous people, and now she lives in Las Vegas. However, despite your very different backgrounds, surprisingly, you both share the same core values and long-term goals. I should mention she also went to a Catholic school, too, so that's probably why we share the same core values. Uh, you also discover that you share a lot of mutual friends. You see, she wasn't actually sitting by herself at the table. She was just holding the table for all of your friends who you soon sat down with everyone. You run into her at a second conference six months later, and you totally hit it off again. The perfect opportunity presents itself for you to ask her out on a date. So, what should you do? Should you stay single and free to mingle? Or should you take a chance and ask this lovely lady out on a date? All right, who wants to stay single and free to mingle? Okay, <laughs> of course my dad. <laughs> and who would rather ask her out on a date? Show of hands, all right, so, excellent. All right, so let's see what happens to my dad and my sister if they decide to stay single and free to mingle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you have the perfect opportunity to ask her out, but you choose not to. You kind of regret it at the time, but you quickly remember all of the benefits of being single. Uh, you go about your life with the freedom to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want. But years later, you wonder what might have been if you had had that courage to ask her out on that date. Game over. You still achieve your American dream, but it always feels a bit lonely. Oh, and yeah, you still didn't become a rock star. So now let's see what happens to those of you who had the courage to ask her out on a date. So you start sending emails and phone calls and video chats, and then you're flying back and forth between Las Vegas for date night. You eventually move to Las Vegas in order to be with her and for the better career opportunities that Las Vegas provides for the both of you. Uh, two, after two years of dating, uh, you propose to her at her favorite place in the world during her favorite part of her favorite event there, which coincidentally is Pete's Dragon at Tokyo Disney's Main Street Electrical Parade. I assume some of you have seen the Main Street Electrical Parade. Okay. Maybe not, okay. I thought it was more popular, but maybe not. All right, and then uh, you get married a year later in Las Vegas with all of your family and friends present. Unfortunately, there is no singing Elvis at your wedding, but we did have a magician. With your spouse at your side, together you travel the world, uh, you work and speak on every continent, including Antarctica, you help grow each other's businesses, and you support each other through difficult times. More importantly, you have a shared vision for your future. You both want the same things out of life. The two of you are a highly effective team, and you couldn't imagine going through life with anyone else. Congratulations, you've leveled up to your sixth superpower, love. But not the kind of love you see in a you know, lovey-dovey stuff you see in a rom-com or a Disney princess movie. Rather, this is the kind of love that supports you, empowers you, and makes you want to be a better person. The kind of love that makes you want to be the best version of you that you can be. But despite all this love in your life, fortunately, you are still not a rock star. All right, so now you're in your early 40s. Uh, you've essentially achieved your version of the American dream. You've got a great wife, a good job, you own your own home, and you've built a pretty nice nest egg for your retirement. You've achieved all of your career goals as well, too, and made a positive impact on the world. And you make enough money from your investments that you could essentially like retire today and live at least relatively comfortably. But what about the dreams of everyone else who are still struggling to make it in the world? Who's helping them fulfill their dreams like others that helped you fulfill yours? So, what should you do? Should you spend your time empowering others and help them achieve their dreams? Or should you retire early, play some guitar, and sip margaritas by the pool all day? All right, who wants to sip margaritas? <laughs> okay. All right, I hear you. Sounds like a great life. It's, it's the rock star thing to do. All right, so let's see what happens if we go down that route first. All right, so you decide work is dumb and you've done enough of it for one lifetime. You're ready to chillax with your guitar and just lounge around by the pool all day. It's a comfy lifestyle, but you soon get bored and you have too much free time on your hands. You slowly fade away into obscurity, having lived a good life built on the help of others. You achieved your American dream, but you never paid it back, and then the next generation is going to struggle to achieve their dreams. Oh, and unfortunately, you still didn't become a rock star. But now let's see what happens to those of you who chose the path of empowering others. Show of hands, who wants to empower others? Okay, I figured, given it's the Kemper Foundation, most of you would want to empower others. All right, so you think long and hard about your journey, uh, the journey 
your journey to success, uh, you notice that there were a lot of helpers along the way. Family, friends, teachers, mentors who all helped you overcome some kind of obstacle that was standing in your way. And those are just the helpers in the key stories of your life. There are literally hundreds of other people from the stories or the levels in the video game that we didn't have time for who have helped you along uh, the way in your life. You see, your success in the game of life is only partly your own doing. The rest is from the helpers or the non-player characters in video game terminology who offered to help you along the way. The biggest secret to your success in the game of life is that you had a lot of help from other people. And in fact, some of them are actually in the room today. Uh, my parents, my grandpa, and uh, I learned uh, un poco espanol from Mrs. GP in the back. I learned creative writing from Mrs. Guy. And uh, Mr. Lowe, where are you at? Um, I think my, I gave my first presentation in his, one of his uh, classes back in the day. All right, so you and your wife decide to start your own nonprofit organization. We'll call it Serenzi Global, uh, which is a combination of your name. Serenzi is uh, your shipper name, uh, essentially the name that people, ah, I don't even know how to explain shipper names. Let's just skip that, that joke. The, the, kids, the kids will get it, but it's, it's a, a pop reference. Uh, your mission is to improve access to technology education for underrepresented individuals in the IT industry. Essentially, you want to help others improve their lives, their families, and their communities through careers in technology. So, you create a grant that provides free online technology education for over 100 people around the globe. Places like Nigeria, India, and Pakistan, where people don't have access, equal access to technology education. And people with big dreams, just like all of you, uh, who need just a little bit of help from someone along the way in their journey. Congratulations, you've leveled up to your final superpower, empowering others. So you're not solely focused on your own success anymore. You're focused on the success of others. Your dream today isn't to fulfill your own dreams. It's to help others achieve their dreams. But despite all the lives you may have positively impacted, unfortunately, you're still not a rock star. All right, so it's time for level eight, our final level. Hopefully, we've acquired enough skills in order to defeat the final boss in our final battle. All right, so here we are today. It's the day of your 25-year class reunion, technically, tomorrow. You've been outside the walls of Kemper for a quarter of a century now. It feels like a really long time, but it also feels like you're just playing your first concert in that gym just a few, well, 30 minutes ago. Literally, it was 30 minutes in our game. So while planning your reunion, a few of your classmates asked if you're planning to get the band back together to play some songs for your reunion. Um, after all, um, you did play a few songs at your 20-year class reunion. So what should you do? Should you get the band back together to relive your dreams of becoming a rock star? Or do you get on stage in front of a bunch of high school students tomorrow and help them fulfill their dreams? Wow, this final boss battle is going to be super easy, barely an inconvenience. It is totally obvious what we should do. I'm not even going to do a show of hands. We need to grab our guitar and go rock out to some Metallica and Megadeth tomorrow with little bandmates, right? <laughs> No, instead of rocking out today, you chose to be here with all the students of Kemper High School to invest in their future. But despite hopefully making a positive impact in their lives today, unfortunately, you're still not a rock star. Or are you? I mean, there do seem to be quite a few parallels between your original dream of becoming a rock star and the life that you live today. You both create entirely new works of art from scratch. You spend hundreds of hours in the studio. You travel the world and perform in front of live audiences. You both have fans all across the globe, and you're both still living your dreams. But your dreams don't involve all the hangovers, wrecked hotel rooms, and broken hearts. Well, okay, maybe a few broken hearts, but... <laughs> huh, so it looks like you might have become a rock star after all, just not the kind of rock star you had expected. However, this rock star lifestyle is much more rewarding, fulfilling, and meaningful. You get to educate, inspire, and entertain people for a living. More importantly, you get to help others achieve their dreams. In the end, you learn that you don't have to be a musician to be a rock star in your career. All right, so what have we learned here today? This is more to summarize for the students tomorrow. What secrets am I going to teach them to being successful in whatever career they choose? Here are my five key takeaways. First, discover your superpowers. Everyone has some skill or ability that will make you stand out amongst the crowd. It could be sports, music, acting, writing, math, science, public speaking, you name it. You need to find your superpowers, the abilities that give you a distinct advantage at each phase in your life. Second, develop your skills. 
Most of us aren't just born with our superpowers. We need to develop them over a very long period of time. We're talking literally like 10,000 hours of dedicated practice just to become an expert. And even then, becoming one of the best in the world is extremely difficult. Third, find your helpers. No one is successful on their own. You need to find the people that are going to help you overcome the obstacles on your journey. They're your family, your friends, your teachers, your mentors, and more. But you need to find them, you need to ask them for the help that you need, and then show them the respect that they deserve in return. Fourth, it's okay to fail as long as you fail smart. I made a ton of mistakes on the way in my journey. Um, just make sure that you learn from each mistake and become a better person as a result of that mistake. But also be sure that you don't make the kind of mistakes that you can't come back from. There are some mistakes that will literally cost you your health, your wealth, or your life. Fifth, pay it forward. If you become successful as a result of the help of others, it's your responsibility to pay it forward to the next generation. Become one of the helpers in someone else's success story. Helping others is how your story continues through the lives of those that you've touched. And last, I'd like to leave you with a final thought. When I was a child, Kemper planted the seeds of something inside of me. And this seed took a lot of nourishment and, as we can see, a very long time to grow. But once it flourished, it produced something that I think we would say is, is very good in this world. This success is something that we created together as a community. And I believe it's something that we should all be proud of. Thank you.